So you're having thyroid symptoms or thyroid problems and your TSH is actually normal or you were told it was normal. In this video, we want to look at what some of the scenarios could be uh, if it was interpreted wrong or um, you know, uh, you need to take another look at some other things uh, in the thyroid test uh, to figure out what's actually going on with your thyroid. Um, I want to help you troubleshoot what it could be. Um, my name is Dr. Taranella, and in our practice, myself and Dr. Klein, we see a lot of people with thyroid issues, and they are told that their TSH is normal, when in fact it's, you know, not normal. Uh, and that has to do with the reference ranges and uh, not taking into consideration your symptoms and various other things. So we want to look at some of the scenarios where a normal TSH, uh, according to conventional medicine, may be considered uh, abnormal in uh, in our opinion. So if you have questions about this, uh, any of the things that we review in this uh, video, uh, please ask them in the comment section. So as I said in the intro, in this video we're going to talk about what you should be thinking about if you have uh, thyroid problems, meaning symptoms of thyroid issues, with a quote-unquote normal TSH. So first we want to discuss what is normal TSH and what is uh, abnormal TSH. Um, in my practice, uh, typically anything about so first of all, it's an inverse relationship. So your brain, uh, the pituitary, makes uh, TSH, which is an uh, acronym for th uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. And uh, that hormone stimulates the thyroid gland to make T4 and some T3. These are the two thyroid hormones that are important to do all the thyroid uh, functioning. So, um, so in the case that you have... Uh, high TSH, usually that means you have hypothyroid. Now, sometimes uh, you get in scenarios where your uh, TSH is actually normal, and I'm going to show you a, uh, um, a picture of an actual lab result here in a minute. Uh, normal according to uh, conventional medicine, but um, it's actually slightly abnormal, so under-functioning. So anything above 2.5 is slightly high. Now, most conventional labs cut it off at uh, 4.5 or even 5.5. Um, so that's starting to get even more and more under-functioning thyroid. And in those scenarios, uh, you're typically going to start having some of those symptoms of hypothyroidism, weight gain, um, dry skin, constipation, uh, fatigue, uh, among other things. Um, and so if you're having those symptoms and you have high TSH, it may benefit you to, uh, a, a high TSH above 2.5 to actually take thyroid medication or look at you know some of the things that may be uh, having a negative impact on your thyroid hormone, your output of thyroid hormone. So, um, um, so we actually, uh, so, so it really depends on what we're considering normal. So we actually treat people anything above 2.5. We consider that to be kind of a problem area and we want to go after that. Um, you know, if you're not having any symptoms, you can potentially just follow it for a while. Uh, if it's going up and up and up though, you're probably going to want to, um, you know, treat that, uh, a little more aggressively, um, either looking into what the problems, uh, negative impacts on the thyroid might be, um, like toxins or, uh, not enough, uh, not appropriate nutrition or, um, you know, uh, uh, actually taking thyroid hormone. So, um, so I'm going to show you, um, uh, an actual lab result that, uh, we can, go off of that for a minute. Um, but the other thing is also T3. Uh, so T3 is the active form of thyroid um, that uh, you want to make sure that is high enough as well, which I'll show you uh, some of the ranges on that in a second. Um, but just because uh, your TSH is above 2.5 doesn't necessarily mean you need more thyroid hormone. Some people will get very stimulated or excessively stimulated from uh, taking thyroid hormone in the feel very bad or poorly. So um, just because your TSH is somewhat high uh, doesn't necessarily mean you need more thyroid hormone. If you're symptomatic, you probably do. So we have to kind of tread that lightly and you know take all those consider take all those things into consideration. 
So now let's look at the actual lab result. Okay, so here we have some thyroid labs, TSH, uh, free T3, insulin, which isn't really important for this conversation, and cortisol. Um, you can see the reference ranges here, and this person is a bit high normal at 2.46. Uh, like I say, the cutoff is around 2.5, and this in conjunction with having a low free T3 or low normal free T3 um, suggests some under-functioning thyroid. So at uh, 2.7, I usually like to see around 3.0. So these two things in conjunction suggest potentially needing some additional thyroid hormone if they had all of those symptoms, um, like uh, hypothyroid symptoms. So um, the other thing I would note is this cortisol is a bit high, um, which could be causing the body to down-regulate the production of either just T3 or both T4 and T3. Um, so you do see that uh, sometimes. So it's not always necessarily the best idea to just throw someone on thyroid hormone just because they're borderline. You always have to take each scenario in conjunction with the uh, person's symptoms. Uh, you overla overlay that with the labs. Um, kind of see what the rest of the pattern is and then decide what the best course of action is. Okay, so I hope this video was useful in helping you think about and understand what to do when you have thyroid symptoms but a normal TSH. If it was, please click on the like button. This helps me to understand what types of videos you like uh, most and please be sure to subscribe to the channel to get future notifications when a new video is posted and we will see you next time.